Hello, it's Ruth, um, otherwise known as The Delightful Planner, and I'm here with a very different video for you today. Um, if you read my last blog post, which was how to survive a stress tsunami, you'll know that one of the things that I've been doing a lot recently and finding really helpful is um, art journaling, or just journaling in general. But I'm a very new to this whole art journaling thing and one of the things that I noticed when I've been sort of watching YouTube videos and everything else is that you would watch these fantastic videos about how to get into it for beginners and it would always be somebody who came across as a very experienced artist telling you how to do this stuff that was very, very easy. And I know that my first thought was always, well, yeah, it's easy for you <laughs> because you know what you're doing. So I thought I would do just a really quick video to demonstrate what I've been finding lots of fun um, and also when it works um, can be very effective. So it's like an art journaling video for a beginner by a beginner. Now one of the things that I've been loving to use recently is, oh let's see if I'm getting decent lighting, the Tim Holtz dis, um, Distress Stains. Helps if I can speak as well, put my teeth in. Um, and my favourite colours are definitely the Peacock Feathers and, oh, there we go, first knock of the camera stand, the pick, Picked Raspberry. I have also got the Mustard Seed and the Mowed Lawn. But I only tend to like them if I've mixed them in with something else. So this is my current art journal. It's a traveler's notebook that I knocked together myself. And let's see if I can show you some of the pages I've done. And like I said, I did say for beginners by beginners. These are some of the effects that I've been doing. It does get better as you go further back. So it's all sort of very watercolory and splodgy. And a lot of this is it looks really basic when it's just the ink on the page, but where it starts to come in is where you've got the writing. So there, there's an effect I tried with stripes that I quite like. Splodgy one. Now this, I didn't like when I actually did it, but I've done pages like this similarly, and the minute I actually start journaling on them and they've got the writing, I really like it. Can I see? There we go. Now, I like to journal uncensored, so I'm not going to go and do a flick through and let you see every page. This was really good. This was just literally me dabbing and not even worrying that much about the spacing, but it looks really effective. And for this effect, it's really simple. And I'll demonstrate that now. Because all you need is in some, it could be paint, or it could be, I've used Tombow dual brush markers to do this as well, a lot in the front of my book. I'll pick up the clip I just managed to uh, knock on the floor. Now you can see this is just a nice cheap um well i shouldn't say cheap i don't know that it was cheap it's just a normal notebook it was a gift somebody gave me so it's not built to take um markers or paints or anything like that so sometimes it does have bleed through as you can see here and i thought i could give a go for one technique in here and then i was going to have a bit of a play in some other notebooks so i've got a moleskin here here this one is just one i had lying around so it's a graph grid and I've got my next light term all lined up I was actually going to have a plate in here for my next bullet journal and just so we could see how things react with different paper types so for a beginner if you're going to be doing this you can use I've used kids paints before now but these are my little pocket Windsor and Newton paints that I've got. This is all the paints that I have because like I said, beginner. <laughs> I've got my Distress Stains and they're the ones I'm actually going to be using to do this. And I have got the very exotic 
plastic sandwich bag. And what you do with this is, you can see I've been playing with this before now. Look at my lovely white desk, or what once was a lovely white desk. Now, because I've already got pink bleed through on the page, and I'm not that fussed about that, because to be honest, I'm sticking colour on every page in this notebook. I made a bit of a decision after my last journal to just go, I will only do watercolour things in my next journal. And then I've got a different journal for where I, I've been doing some art journaling that involves things like, um, you know, sticking things in it. Just so that it didn't feel too hodgepodgey, so that when I feel like doing things that involve sticking and a bit of stenciling, I've just been playing in here. And I've been finding that very therapeutic as well. But today, we're doing watercolours. So all I do with my great artistic um, technique is splodging. <laughs> and if you just splodge with the ink and don't add anything else, you can easily pick this up and literally turn it over and splodge on the page and wiggle it around. And that's one way of getting a really basic technique and then if you want to start filling in some of the gaps you can do that just by picking up the bag and moving it. Now because I'm new at this it can be sometimes very hit and miss. It's getting more hitting and less missing on some of my pages but there is still plenty of times I do something and I go oh my god that's horrific. <laughs> but all you do is oh there we are, knock the camera stand again. Is either keep trying, because sometimes adding a little extra layer of colour can help save the page, or you just stick something over it. So that's one way of doing it, where you just go, right, okay, it's just ink, or just paint whacked on the page. Another thing that leads to a very different technique is, so I'll do this in the mouse skunker here while I let that dry. The nice thing if you just do the ink is it dries quickly. If you do this with Tombow markers it's incredibly quick for drying. I'll show you that in a second. But now I'll well, do the same colours and the same technique. But this time I'm going to add some water. And there's two different ways I found that can lead to things looking a bit different depending on how you add the water. And the first way I'm going to show you is if you add the water on the bag and you just literally do a few splodges. And this is usually quite good if you can just get some water to splodge and just start making the colours blend just a little. I know, for those of you who are experienced artists, please excuse any and all terminology <laughs> I'm using with my splodging and my water dripping. But this is so therapeutic to do, it's calming. Let me just turn it over. And this time the water means the colours you can end up with can be that little bit softer. It also means they blend beautifully together and you get that much more traditional watercolour effect, ironically, when you consider that it's because you've added water. There we go. Now, a lot of the time, I actually like the page I do after this. So you don't just get one page out of doing this. You can see how wet that is there. You then put this off to one side and let it dry. So I'll do that with this now and I'll show you what it looks like when it's dried. You can also continue to play. Can you see there how it's got colors running? So you can just hold that to go down and just let it run. And I really like that. This is making the page seem far more crinkly than it does to my eye. So we'll let that dry now. So I'll plonk that over to the side here. And then go back to my current art journal. This page is already dried. And we'll just flick to the next page. And you can see there the colours 
Oh, actually, no, I fib. There is a little bit of bleed through there at the side. I was about to say there's no bleed through. Because it tends to be when you add the water that I get the bleed through. There we go. And you just turn it over. And for no extra effort, and you get an extra page. And you can see here, if I do the comparison, same paper, paper bag. Oh, honestly, I can't talk today. Right, for the same plastic bag, the exact same ink that was put on, first splodge and wiggle around on one page, second splodge, but you get a very different look. Because obviously here it's much more watercolour, the, the colours are all merging and the lines are blurring between them. And here it's a bit more, it's much softer and more pastely and there's much more gaps. So it's just a different technique. And then if you really want to sort of keep building up the colours, you can then just go, oh, yep, I'll just get that little bit I've got left there and just put it on top again. And then you just get that slight little hit of a bit more intense colour over there. And again, when you add the writing, it's really effective. Or if you get a quote, if I'm writing quotes at the moment, I am loving. And please forgive my complete mangling of the pronunciation here. This Tombow... Um, is it Fudensuke brush pen? I like them in the hard um, and I'm finding it's really, I find it them easier to write with. Let's find one where I've actually done the quote. Hey, there we go. There we are. Now this is one I wrote first thing this morning and I wasn't at my best lettering but I find it so much easier to get those thick strokes and still have control over the thin strokes using this sort of Tombow brush pen over using one of the dual brush pens particularly on smaller spaces if I've got a great big space to write on or I'm only writing one word I love to use the dual brushes so there we are, right, I've probably completely splodged that page now, right. So we'll let that dry, and there's the other way I found that I like to play with. Is that one still drying over there? Let's dig out the Leuchtturm. So we'll just go straight at the back. Now, actually, I'm suddenly thinking this could be a little bit of an experiment because I haven't actually done any of this in my light stone before. The other way of doing it is to actually wet the page with water. And again, we get the good old plastic bag. I should say with these, I just like doing it where you just bang it on the table and get that great big splatter effect. You could obviously, if you wanted to, just, you know, streak it over like that. She says, doing that completely off the camera. There we are. Let's try that again. You could, if you wanted to. I'll get me um, peacock feathers. Just drag this over and do it like that. Yeah, all the paper has already actually started to dry, so... Sorry, you can tell I didn't clean this brush properly the last time I used it. So the water is getting a slight pinky tinge. Right, and then you get this. Now, as you probably all no doubt gathered, I don't mind the mess. So I've got a splodge that's gone over there, I don't mind, because then I can just lift this up. Now I do find, if I have wetted the page, there we are, we'll 
get an immediate contrast here. So page wetted, page not wetted, but obviously some of the water has transferred onto the plastic bag. But you can see there the ink is instantly sort of trying to run off to the edge of the page, which can be good because you can get some drips, you can play a bit with the colour. And then if it gets a bit too much, you can just get yourself a bit of kitchen roll and blot it. And then there you go. That's my very basic beginner's guide to art journaling with, well, you could do this with watercolour paints, like I said, or distress stains like I've done here. Or you can use, actually I've not demonstrated how you could do it with them. Um, Tombow markers. I can't remember who it is I saw that showed this to begin with. Um, but this isn't something I came up with myself. There are some very clever people who've been doing this. And I've learnt from. It's just I go and mass YouTube binges and then forget who I've seen doing what and where. Right, so there's the lights term. Sorry. I hope nobody's getting seasick from the amount of times I keep bopping this um, camera stand. So I'll pop this over to one side. Now I've got to say, the Leuchtturm is handling the water beautifully, better than the moleskin. Or at least it is on this page. Right, now then. Let's get the good old plastic bag. My bit of kitchen roll, I'll wipe the bag down. Now, you don't have to use a sandwich bag. I've seen people use acetate or just even packaging that they've been given for free. Well, not been given for free, but you know, it's come. It's come actually wrapped around something that they've ordered and they've just kept the plastic packaging and they've used it to do this sort of technique. Right, so you get your plastic bag. You get the brush marker of your choice. And in my case, that's the Tombow 452, which is their sort of pastel-y blue, or it comes in their pastel set. And you do this. Now, I'd say with the markers, you always definitely want to add water. And again, you can blend some of the colours. Let's just stick with them, um, blue and pink today. Let's have a bluey pink day. So this one is Tombow 725. I'll stick links to everything below, but to be honest, it's all really easy to find the stuff. I get it all off Amazon, mostly just because I live in the northeast of England and sometimes it can be a bit hard to get some of this stuff in physical shops. Now, I mean, I'm using a little aqua brush here. I was about to say, because it's easier and it promptly stops splodging water, <laughs> can also just use a paintbrush with a bit of water. Now, if I wanted to, I could wet the page. I just partly just like doing that spray effect with the paintbrush. It's fun, she says, and then making a bit of a mess. Right, let's turn this over and do yet another page in my current art journal. So with this one, because I've put quite a bit of water down, I'm going to lay the journal down on top of the plastic bag and then flip it over and that leads to a bit less mess. There we go. Do suddenly find like I've had it there a lot of the paint has run straight into the crease of the spine that is something you want to try and mop up quickly because otherwise it can actually weaken the spine of your book there we go and you can see there again you've got that lovely blending of colour so that is my super quick guide, or maybe not super quick guide because I'm suddenly registering at 20 minutes, for how to get some watercolour effects in your art journal in a nice easy way 
because if I can do it, seriously anybody can do it. So this is the one I did with the Distress Stains where I put water on the bag and you can see there it's still drying but it's got a really beautiful effect. This is the one I did with the Tombow brush markers. So not quite the watery effect but it's much less messy, it's very quick and easy to do. Um, you won't have to be like laying down newspapers to do it first. I've done it sat on my knee in front of the telly before now with no bother. Just ignore that wibbly line there. That seems to be something I only get with this notebook that comes up every now and then. And then last but not least is how it's turned out in the Leuch term. Um, where I wet the page first and actually that's dried already. So that's worked really well. Probably because this is... Um, I know it's it, this is fountain pen friendly paper. So you'd imagine that then for... That then for? That therefore it would deal better with with water and ink. It has bled through a bit, but um, you all saw I was not shy about slapping down the water. Should have knows what's happened on this page. There we are. Bit of bleed through. And we already saw my other journal for, for bleed through as well. So let's lay this out so we can see more. Move my coffee out the way. Oh, there we are. I'll show you. And that was the very first one we did. Where no water added at all. It was just the distress stains. And again, I've got to remember, I like the distress stains that I can't say today because I'm tired. <laughs> because they are pretty mess free. It's just there, it's nice and easy, and you can just splodge it down. You don't have to mix the colours. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to try and be posting more videos, so please hit the subscribe button if you want to see them. Um, and, and, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> should try that again. There we go. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. I mostly do planning videos. This is just a very brief array into the art journaling world, just because it's something that I've been finding really useful. It helps reduce the um, stress levels. And it's just for yourself. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. So just get out there, play and enjoy. And let me know what you think. Um, and otherwise, if you've got any more ideas for what a simple newbie beginner could do, let me know in the comments below. There we are. Otherwise, I'll see you again later. Thanks now. Bye.